So I had my beautiful metallic violet background in, done with acrylic paint yesterday. Now I'm up to my favourite part of the abstract, which is mark making. Absolutely love it. So today I have some woody, Stabilo woody pencils in a navy blue type colour, a purple. Uh, this one's called, mm, no colour, but a grapey colour. Pink, white and a turquoisey blue. Now I haven't used these before. These are Sakura solid markers. And I have one in black, white and a blue colour. And then these are new as well. I haven't tried these yet either. Uh, they're called Jane Davenport Ladybug Dotters. Basically, they make dots and I thought, how could you get much more fun than that? So I'm going to give them a try as well. So I'll move them all to the side. And I think I will start, actually I'm going to start with the Sakura solid marker. Let's have a go of that. Oh, got a funny little cap on the inside. Okay. Interesting. It's um, got a very shiny solid top. What is it exactly? I think it's so, mm. It says permanent, easy to use, opaque, fade and waterproof, marks on most services, dries in five to seven minutes, recap after use, and it can be removed with alcohols. So it says it's paint. Um, I'm not exactly sure what, but anyway, let's go, let's have a go. Oh, feels beautiful. It's like a silky crayon. I just feel like blowing all over the place. Okay, I'm going to do some with my left hand. Just twisting the marker, just letting it make some really nice organic lines and shapes. It feels beautiful on this lovely smooth surface. Very nice. Okay, didn't use very much either so I'll Recap the lid. I like those. Okay. Now, I might try a Stabilo. I might try the grape coloured one. Just going to do some, again, just some lines. All I want to do is get some lines onto this board. It's a gesso board by Ampersand. Beautiful boards to work on. They're expensive, but they're awesome to work on. Very smooth, nothing like a canvas. Great for oil and cold wax. Okay, bit of a left hand. So the reason I do all these marks is A, because I love it and B, because it gets me started. It puts something down on the board. Sorry, that's my dog in the background growling and playing, throwing a toy. Um, yeah, so, and, and also because in the end, after a few layers of oil and cold wax, occasionally if you scrape back enough, you can actually see some of these marks. And I love actually being able to spot a couple of marks peeking through the surfaces, the layers, so. That's another reason. And it's always hard starting off with a blank canvas. This actually really gets you started and gives you something to go on. This is a pale pink in the woodies. They're also beautiful and smooth on this surface. Okay, now I might try, so I might go for the, the blue Sakura solid marker. If I can get the lid off. Yes. Okay, so it's little plastic lids inside. Ah, oh, these are just so smooth and look at that colour, smooth and buttery. <gasps> Loving that colour. It's almost um, metallic. Gorgeous. Mm, yum. <laughs> it's, it's nice, really. having some fun here. No thinking involved, you just let the marker go where it wants to. If you just 
twirl the twirl the marker or whatever you've got in your hand it just goes all over the place and just makes really nice natural lines organic lines it's a beautiful color oh, I'm loving that yeah so cool okay I'm using that one again I think I'll have to order some more of that one just trying to see what color it is have it on it but um it's a beautiful blue okay now i might try some of these ladybug dotters so this is a new one as you can see it's still white so apparently what you have to do is just rub it up and pump it up and down a few times okay now as you can see there it's coming through on parts so if you want little shapes like that you can do that and then I'll just bring my practice colored over and okay getting a bit more ink there okay I think we're ready <laughs> who doesn't love dots that's cool. <laughs> Who needs a stencil when you have a dotter? Isn't that awesome? I, I like dots. <laughs> She doesn't like this noise I'm making with the marker <laughs> actually I think that could be it I like these these are good okay that's the black one now I might try this pink one Again, I'll just prime it. I'll just be a bit of, oh, it's bright pink. <laughs> okay. That's like a neon pink. All right. Isn't that awesome? Easy way to get some dots going. Circles, dots, whatever. So have a blue and a purple so I might do the blue see what color we end up with there okay that's a nice blue right. so easy to do this on the board harder with the canvas can't put as much pressure one more um, the woody pencil in a white Just doing some twirly things now is going on really nicely over everything. What 
why not a few treble clefs? Forgetting which way to go first, I'm out of practice. <laughs> okay, so I think the odds are that we might get something here showing through at the end. I like that little glimpse, just a little peek of something. And this gives you a bit of history for your painting. This is your first layer. And probably the most fun layer of all because you haven't had to plan or think or make sure you've done something the right way or the wrong way. Just having fun. Okay, so that is my first layer. And now it's time to mix the paint. Okay, so I've mixed up my palette and here it is here. I didn't want to bore you with the, the mixing part, but basically what I'd use is titanium white, Prussian blue, quinacridone magenta and quinacridone gold. So I've just got those four colors here and then I've mixed each of the blue the magenta and the quin gold with white and then I've done a couple of combinations of the the blue and the magenta the blue and the gold um, magenta and the and the gold and mixed some white in some so okay so that's basically my palette that I'll be using um, it should be harmonious but I um, don't know about some of those colours. I think what I'm going to start with is laying down the Prussian blue and the magenta just to get started. And I think I might save some of these colours for maybe the next layers um, as little highlights and things. But we'll see as we go. I'll probably change my mind. So let's get started. I'll just get this palette out of the way. I'm going to use a palette knife like this. And I've just received these Messermeister scrapers, so I'm going to give one of those a go as well. Okay, so I think I'll start with the with the blue. Getting any dust off it? Okay, so this is a Prussian blue. And I'm going to do this quite thinly. And what I'll probably do is fast forward, um, sorry, put it in in fast mode so that you don't have to watch me painstakingly do every stroke. So from here I'll speed it up, but I'm just doing some nice light layers, hopefully with some of this coming through. This is fairly transparent when you, when you scratch it back. And on this, I've noticing on this ampersand board, um, it's very smooth, so it's very easy to, to get that um, translucent sort of effect. Okay.
And I just want to show you, sorry about the dog barking, but um, I have a, a spare board um, just next to me here. And so what I'm going to do, sorry, just, um, it's got something on it there. Yes, but what I'm going to do is use the leftovers, instead of putting that on paper towel, I'm going to actually put that onto this spare board. I can make some room for it here. Instead of wasting the paint, I'm going to just start another one just with a, a base layer with these paints. Rory. So I'm just scraping that onto this other board. So I'm just doing this, just scraping it onto this other board, just to save wasting it, that's all. And then by the time I finish this painting, I've probably covered up this board and got a first layer down. So basically, that's what I've got. So it's a good way not to waste your paint, especially with oil paints, and um, have enough to start another layer. So I just have to do a quick wipe of this and get a little bit off, but it's, it's good to have that spare board there. And then, or you could have some oil paper, paper for oils and just use that and as I said, start your first layer of another painting using these colours. Okay, so next I'm going to add some magenta. So I'm going to get a bit of rain outside. Again. <laughs> okay. So just continue, continuing to add the magenta. Um, just trying to really get these two colours down. Um, these will be the two main colours of this painting using the large palette knife just to spread the paint a little more. Now I tried adding this pink. I was trying to go for some lighter colours but to be honest I didn't really like it. So I'm just adding it to my spare board there. Now trying for a, a, a light purple mixture of the blue, Prussian blue and magenta. Not keen on that one either to be honest so now I'm popping some white in. Um, I'm going to really try and cover as much of those other colours. Bit of a semic writing using a, a skewer a sh with a sharp point. Just scratching through to the, the bottom layer which was that beautiful purple metallic that I wanted to try and show as much of as possible. So now I've just sprinkled around some Gamsol, hoping to leave that for about 20 seconds and then um, use this big spatula to scrape it off and hopefully leave some marks behind. I've, I've found this actually a bit of bit touch and go. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's worked up in the magenta at the bottom of the screen there, but not much else. Um, I've got a, a roller now with little indentations on it, just going for some added texture. And I have that in three sizes, a large, medium, small. So this is the next stage of the painting. I didn't do any more recording. Um, my camera kept not coming on. So this is where I added a lot of white and again did lots of mark making because I wanted to bring through that beautiful uh, metallic violet from the, the first layer. Um, I was pretty happy with it at this stage but I decided to keep going which is always a fatal mistake. Um, I wish I could have gone back to that stage but yeah. So I'm going on to the next photo now. Um, so I added some more marks and things and I really didn't like the pink areas and the blue areas and it just didn't do much for me. So I decided to keep going and try and get back to where I liked it again. This time I added some yellow um, to try and brighten it up a bit. I liked the yellow but still not liking the look of the painting. So that was an extra layer. Then I went again 
Um, so I darkened it back up again, had a few bits of yellow showing through. Um, yeah, so and then I needed to get back to some mark making, but this was after I added the next lot of oil and cold wax. So here I'd got some marks in, I'd done some more scraping, and I was much happier. I, I, I like it much more when it's got some line work and some scraping through. So I'm starting to get there now. This one, fairly similar, but just a bit more line work. I tried to get a bit more dark in there. Um, yeah, I, I'm liking the white areas because they've got the little multi-colours in them. Uh, this one, I'm again working on the dark and trying to get some light in there and some, some marks that I like. I'm, I'm almost there with this one. Um, starting to like it a lot more. And this was my final layer. I was really happy with this one. I felt like I got enough darks in. I got some mark making to um, amplify the contrast between the lights and the darks. Um, and yep, this is where I ended up. So I called this one Cosmic Glow. Everybody said it had a spatial look about it. Um, I loved lots of, lots of areas in this one. Um, and the mark making was lots of fun and I can't wait to start my next oil on cold wax. I'm going to try for a different colour scheme next time so stay tuned. Thanks for watching and please click like and subscribe.